Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. So today it's uh, time to paint some daffodils. We've got daffodils in our garden and this is some of they. And uh, it's interesting to look at them because uh, you can see they've got six petals and one large trumpet in the middle. And um, I'm going to have a go at painting them in a combination of watercolour and watercolour pencil. And you'll see what I mean in a second when we get started with the materials. I'm going to do a setting which is going to be something like this in a garden. And I'm going to add some bees and a beehive um, in the background instead of a tree. So um, this is uh, some reference material from Canterbury Cathedral in England and uh, they're rather beautiful. You can see the light shining through them as well, whereas here it's just plain yellow. Now, um, to choose the colours, I'm going to my box of tubes here, which is my, my loose painting um, materials. I keep them in this separated tray like that. So I've got my reds, my blues, my greens, my neutrals, that's to say browns and greys, yellows and, and black and white here. Um, so we want to look at the yellows and I'm going to select um, some yellows here and then I'm going to put them in my little ceramic dishes, which um, I always use when I'm doing loose painting. One colour in a dish and um, then I use my large butcher's tray to do the mixing on. So I'm just take, going to take my uh, camera and fix it up here so that you can see me looking at these paints. So what colours are we going to want? Well, we need nice, clean, bright uh, yellows for daffodils. So we probably want to discard things like yellow ochre. This colour here, yellow ochre. Um, because this is <clears throat> quite a dull yellow and um, <clears throat> I don't think that will work. So we'll put that to one side. Naples yellow is opaque, so we don't want that. Now, gamboge would be good because that's a nice transparent colour, but this is a cotton paint, so that means it's a student colour and it's called gamboge hue, and hue means it's not actually gamboge. Gamboge is a true colour, um, so this is a sort of uh, imitation. So ideally we wouldn't use that, but if that's all you had, that would be okay. Then we've got, um, this one here is New Gamboge. Um, that's a Winsor & Newton Artists watercolor. So that's a pure color and that's a nice transparent yellow. So that's a definite possibility. This is an old tube. They call them professional colors now. They used to call them artists, but now they call them professional. I don't think they changed anything except the name. So I'm going to pop that one over there as possible for my palette of yellows. Um, this is uh, Oreolin. Oreolin is a transparent yellow. This again is an older tube. You can tell that um, by the fact that it's practically empty. And uh, so I might swatch that one out as well and see what that looks like for these daffodils. A nice transparent yellow. Um, this is a new tube. This is Scheveningen yellow. This is Old Holland. This is a light yellow, uh, lemon yellow. So that is quite likely to be a very good color. We'll see. Gamboge genuine. So that's the same thing again. That's another bright yellow. We've got new Gamboge and Gamboge genuine. Um, this is cadmium yellow. Now you can use cadmium yellow. You might want to use cadmium yellow, but just be aware that the cadmium colors are not 
100% transparent, so they can get muddy. But um, we'll take a look at that one too, probably. Um, Chevening Chevening and yellow medium. That's another pure yellow, so we'll put that one over there too. Yellow ochre, we said we didn't want. Um, this is a quinacridone gold, but this one is not a good, not a good one at all. It's um, quite opaque, so I don't use that much. That was a mistake. Whereas this one is a Horadam uh, Schmincke, Horadam quinacridone. That's good. We might want that. That's a nice transparent, more on the orange side. So that would kind of go towards the idea of, you know, perhaps the the, the sheath of the, um, you know, this bit here. Uh, these papery bits here. You might want some quinacridone for that. Now I'm just um, coming to putting out my paints here. And so far I've got um, sap green which is what I'm going to use for the leaves and for the stems and for the bases of the flowers. Then I've got cobalt blue, because sometimes you need to make the green a little bit bluer. This is Chevening and yellow, medium. This is Chevening and lemon. And I want to open this tube of uh, Gamboge Genuine, um, but it's stuck. The lid is stuck. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to Drop it into very hot water just for a few minutes. Well, not even a few minutes, a few seconds will do. Um, and to save my hands, because, you know, I think if I were a man, I might be able to do this without any mechanical aid, but I've tried and I can't. So I'm going to use my old pair of um, pliers or pincers, whatever you call them. And then it comes off really easily no problem at all to get that off. And uh, we'll see what colour this comes out as. I think this might do possibly for the shadowy areas. I'm not quite sure. It might, uh, might work. Anyway, we managed to get that one to relinquish itself for posterity. So we'll put that there so I don't forget what it is. Take water away. And um, what else have I got? Some quinacridone gold. Probably a good idea here. And uh, then I'm going to have a look at these colours quickly and see what I've got. So that's quinacridone there. Oh, and then the other one that we were going to look at was cadmium yellow as a comparison. If we can get it out, yes. A nice big tube of this, but it is only a cotton colour, so it's a student colour. Um, this paper is quite yellowish actually, so I think I'm going to try it out on a piece of whiter paper. This is the stuff I'm going to be using. This is Lavis Fidelis, which is an arches or arch paper. I can smell those daffodils. So that's the cadmium. Then this is lemon. can see the difference, can't you? And this is Chevening, Chevening. <laughs> this is yellow, which is also different. Chevening and yellow. Then this is Gamboge, Gamboge Genuine. This is quinacridone gold. Something similar there, isn't it? Then we've got sap green. And cobalt blue.
So those are the colors I'm going to be using. So we had cadmium yellow, which is somewhat opaque. Then we've got lemon yellow. Then we've got medium yellow. Uh, then we've got um, this one here, which is gamboge. Then this one is quinacridone. This is sap green. And this is cobalt blue. If you haven't got sap green, you could use uh, Windsor green. Same problem here. That's it. If it's really stuck, you need the water. If it's only slightly stuck, you can get away with just, see now that's pretty vicious that color. As you can see, it's completely different from sap green, but, and I won't be using this because I have got sap green, so I'm halfway there. But if you mix that with something like new gamboge, you're going to get something like that, which is much closer. to sap green. In fact, sap green even also needs a little bit of yellow in it to make it into a natural green. So it doesn't matter whether you start with Windsor green or sap green. If you start with sap green, you're a little bit closer to where you want to end up with a natural green. Once you've added your quinacridone or your gamboge or your lemon or your um, um, cadmium or whatever yellow. So that can go there, and that's our guide. And then I'm going to put my colors on my butcher's tray, which is over there for the minute. We'll just pop those around the outside edge. Okay, so I've got my quarter sheet of Lavis Fidelis here. Any watercolor paper will do. And if you wanted to do, um, if you wanted to have it uh, on a block, that's good. That'll stop it from cockling. But I don't think I'm going to be using a great deal of water for this, so it should be all right um, without taping it down, it should be. So I'm gonna grab a pencil. Now, pencil, when I say I'm going to grab a pencil, I'm going to use a watercolour pencil to do the drawing with so that when the daffodils are painted, the watercolour lines won't show, they'll blend in. Because if I use an ordinary pencil like this one, of course, it's going to show. And with the daffodils, you really don't want that. So these are some possibilities for drawing with. And uh, I think I'll pick that one for the time being because it's got the longest point. And this is lemon yellow, so that's probably as good a place as any to start. I'm going to start off by drawing a beehive. Um, so a beehive is like a little house, obviously. I'm using a regular pencil for this because um, this is uh, not going to be painted in yellow. And uh, this particular beehive is going to be a bit of a challenge when it comes to perspective, but uh, if you want the sketch, um, you can get that for free from our website, dianeanton.com. Just pop on over there and you can download it for no charge. And uh, so then there's little legs on the bottom and a little shelf there where the bees go in. We used to keep bees in the garden until a few years ago when uh, we lost, there's a big problem with bees and um, they keep getting sick. So we struggled on for a bit, but then we gave up because we couldn't spend enough time on them. So there's the beehive. And then, um, I'm going to, um, let me see, I've got my photo here of the daffodils. And um, I'm going to use that to give me um, some ideas. So, and I've got these wonderful daffodils right in front of me. So,
let's kind of sketch in it might be that I need to use green so that you can see I'm not sure if that's going to be visible It's a light green. See how this goes. I have a bud here. And we put another flower up here. We have them facing. Another one there, and maybe just sketching them in. We'll see what we want to do when it comes to painting them. I, I really don't much like planning things out too much in advance. And then um, probably I was thinking I would have some bees, but I'm going to take some liberties with scale because I can't paint them too so small, can I? So we'll do them bigger than they really are. Somebody who um, watches the channel fairly uh, often said to me that the way I draw bees reminded him of croissants and uh, that was really helpful actually because ever since then I've been very much more confident about how to draw a bee so I think to myself yes it's just like a French croissant fold it up like that and then you just pop the wings on of course croissants don't have wings but there we are so we've got four bees there beehive and some daffodils in the front um so yes, yeah, so let's get started. Question is, what do we start with? And I'm thinking I'm probably going to start with the flowers on the daffodils and I'm probably going to start with the lightest color. So we'll come in with the lemon yellow. One, two, three, four, five. Six. And we will have to put some shadow in, but you can see that the 
um, the pencil isn't going to show, which is a really good thing. I, um, I'm not going to say that daffodils are easy to paint. I don't think they are, but they should be fun. They should be relaxed. They should be, I think, um, something that you enjoy doing and it doesn't matter whether um, they turn out, you know, oh, what's the word, like, uh, um, photographs or whatever. We'll just put a little bit of slightly darker yellow in there and let that run a little bit. Just go with the flow. You know, don't try to control everything because you won't. You won't be able to. Um, I think I might do the beehive now. I'm going to give the beehive a pale blue roof. The one we had had a sort of metal roof and so the best colour for doing that would have been um, cobalt blue. And then I'm going to paint the sides in a sort of slightly different shade of blue mixed uh, sap green with cobalt blue. You can pick any colour you like but I just happen to have that to hand. And I'll put that here. Just keep it nice and loose. I'll paint in these sections and then I'll come in with some shadows in a second. So then imagine the sunlight is casting um, shadows underneath each of these louvers. for now and now I'm going to paint the bees so let's paint them let's use some cadmium yellow paint the I like to think of them as being sort of stripey like that paint the stripes in some bees have got um, black bottoms and some have got more yellow bottoms to need some black, aren't I?
I think they're supposed to have black on their heads more, but whatever. We just keep them really simple because, um, well, I'm keeping them really simple partly because I'm trying to do it reasonably quickly so that you don't get bored and go away and watch Russell Brand. And, uh, but not that there's anything wrong with Russell Brand, of course. Do I mention him too often? I think I possibly do. I don't watch him anymore, actually. I'm too busy watching Dean Roberts at the Canterbury Cathedral. Slightly different kind of spiritual guide. Okay, now when we're going to do the legs, I'm going to do those with pen because it's too fiddly otherwise, isn't it? So let's see if I can find a pen. Just let your hand shake when you do the legs. And I know they have six legs, but it always looks to me too clumsy if you put them all in. So I just say some of them aren't visible. And then if you want, you can do some sort of, because bumblebees tend to be a bit sp sort of, what's the word, spiky, furry. So you can just put some A little bit of that. Keep them nice and light. Okay, so now maybe we'll paint in some of these leaves. Um, so we're going to be looking for sap green mixed with a little bit of blue and or and or a little bit of yellow. Oh, I forgot. We've got these buds here, so we'll do those first in green. And of course they're going to have nice yellow at the end. So you could start with the yellow like that and then add the green. It's probably a better way around to do it. Yeah, just lift that out a bit. back to our bluish green. The leaves are rounded at the top. It's actually quite surprisingly difficult to paint. Put in the stem there. control things too much. When you see the paint doing something that you quite like, just sort of let it, and then allow things to develop, whatever takes your fancy. If you suddenly think, I'd quite like to put some quinacridone gold in with the leaves, then, then do it.
yeah, some of the leaves. You might want to paint them more green, more um, uh, yellowish on this side and more bluish on that side. But you should have a bit of both on both sides. So you get a sort of... natural blend. So we want some dark green underneath here, probably. And we're kind of putting in the background, trying to be a little bit bold and brave. And uh, Imagine that we've got kind of um, lots of daffodils in the distance. So we've painted a few close up, but in the distance we're going to have more. So we're painting alternately green and yellow and blue. Different yellows. down the bottom here, put some darks in. I'm getting to the point here where I'm probably going to have to let it dry. Soon. Let's see what's what's what. Thank you. 
Okay, almost for sure I'll need a little bit more. Just a little bit more definition here. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and come back to it in a sec. So there we are, there's the final painting. I'm not going to do anything else to it, although you could, you could add some sky, you could do various other things. Um, just a simple, loose impressionistic uh, watercolour of bees, beehive and some daffodils done with an assortment of watercolours and some watercolour pencils. And I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, go over to Dianton, <coughs> excuse me, dianton.com where you can download the sketch and uh, have a go for yourself. So I'll see you again soon. If you enjoyed this, please give us a like and subscribe and I'll see you again here soon. So bye for now, everybody. Bye bye.